Hello everybody, welcome to the Leadership and Management in Human Resources training. By the end of this video, uh, you need to be able to understand better the HR management fundamentals, the HR processes in general. I'm going to give you a brief overview of all of them. Uh, a little bit of strategic HR, so we are going to talk about the strategic planning in HR and also a couple of uh, HR leadership activities. So in the first module, we are going to talk about HR management fundamentals. These are the main concepts that we are going to discuss during this presentation. Incentives, compensation, headcount, headhunt, human resources or HR, benefits, recruit, and job description. So a brief definition about human resources. It deals with the management of a company's employees. This is a general uh, definition, but just to understand that the main resource uh, in this department is a matter of people. Okay? The main um, Processes inside human resources are recruit, train, evaluate, and promote. These are the main activities. HR includes hiring, training, employee development, pay, and benefits. Okay, in a really uh, summarized uh, definition. Headcount is the number of people employed in a company or organization is called the headcount. Head so headcount is a matter of all the employees inside the company. We count all the employees inside the company. In HR, we often talk about increasing, reducing or cutting the headcount, which means we need to hire people we need to increase the number of employees, we need to cut employees, or we need to terminate them. Or we also talk about fire employees. Okay, these are the main words that we use to talk about headcount. Recruiting is the process of attracting, finding, and selecting new employees. Recruitment is the first step of uh, are R and S processes process. Uh, recruiters must match qualified people with the right jobs through screening and interviewing. So when we talk about this subject, we need to guarantee that we are going to identify top talent people in the market. Instead of hiring people who apply for a job, a company may headcount them for, from other organizations. In other words, we need to, uh, when we don't find uh, the, the, talent, uh, the top talent that we need, we need to go uh, and search in the market, in the job market, but sometimes we don't find the right candidate for the right position. So we use the headhunt to support us to find this employee, this top talent employee in the market. So headhunt is going to hunt uh, top talented people inside the market. A job hunter's job, in other words, is to find qualified employees to fill specific positions. That's why a headhunt or a headhunter, which is the, the, the right term for this, is responsible to identify in other companies the right uh, employee for our company. Another definition now that we are going to discuss is job description. A job description lists the tasks responsibilities and qualifications of a job. It is a document where you can find all the skills, all the tasks, all the responsibilities, all the duties, all the references 
uh, of a job, of a job position, obviously. Compensation. Compensation, in general, is a department responsible for all the, the payments of, uh, of an employee. So the money a company pays its employees in salary, wages or bonuses is called compensation. Many companies have an organized compensation structure that links pay to performance and the length of employ employment. In other words, you are going to uh, standardize all the structure of compensation. So, uh, in a matter of payment, the salaries, the wages, the bonuses, um, awards sometimes, all the standards of payments are developed by compensation. Benefits is another way to compensate your employees uh, for a well done job. So it, it is an extra package, extra to uh, compensation. Okay, so compensation given to employees in addition to salary or wages. Benefits may include vacation time, insurance plans, or, and pension plans. I would say that you could include here many other types of services. Uh, they can be uh, mandatory or non-mandatory. The non-mandatory ones can be uh, divided into uh, the ones you need to invest money or the ones that you don't need to invest money. The mandatory ones in Brazil are composed by the extra salary, which is the decimo terceiro salary that you pay in the end of the year or in the beginning of the year. Uh, what else? The PLR or bonus, uh, PLR, we say in Portuguese. We also have transportation, uh, we have healthy and uh, dental care, health and dental care, and we have many other types of benefits, right? Incentives are usually tied to specific performance goals, such as meeting a sales target. So we call it incentives because they are kind of bonus that we give to employees in order to target some uh, goals of the company or of the department. Incentives may include also financial bonuses, company-funded trips, or conferences. Here you have a couple of other definitions that we need to learn during this training. Learning and development, on-the-job training, performance appraisals or performance evaluation, develop, uh, learning, uh, leadership development, equal opportunities, proficiency, coaching, and talent management. A company's strategic efforts to attract, hire, develop, manage, and promote, and I would say motivate and engage good employees is talent management. Talent management is a, fun a function inside human resources that uh, makes a partnership with uh, recruitment and selection, training and development, comp and ban, leadership in general, and performance evaluation. And with this, the intention is to identify the best talented employees, to calibrate them in order to create a succession plan inside the company, obviously uh, aligned with the objectives of the company through the process that we called cascading. Performance appraisal or performance evaluation is the evaluation of an, an employee's uh, work and abilities. Uh, regular performance reviews are often uh, tied to compensation and promotion within a company. So it's a matter of evaluation, uh, evaluating the individual performance through uh, tools or evaluations, tests 
that we have uh, dur in general during a year, a year period, right? Learning and development is the field of HR concerned with improving the work and performance of employees. Learning and development, also called training and development, involves educational and training programs. This is one of the most common functions um, that people know uh, inside HR. On-the-job training is one of the practices that is applied from training and development from TND that happens during the regular course of work and uh, uh, in other words it is most used when we are um, when we have the needs of someone inside production line for example it is much more common inside production line or maintenance line where someone more experienced is going to teach another employee that is a junior employee in general. And this happens inside the jobs, during the activities, during the regular course of the work. Got it? Employees learn by working with the tools and process, uh, processes normally used in the job. So, as I have said before, it happens during the regular process of the job. Companies may coach select employees by giving on a one help to improve skills or performance. It is a practice that in general HR use, uh, uses to, uh, in order to the employee uh, to achieve the best performance possible with accountability. Okay, so uh, the coachee is not going to give the answer to the employee, but is going to make questions, a lot of questions, in order to the employee discovers uh, the right way to follow and the right tools to use. So the employees needs to have the accountability uh, by that process. And a coach can provide very uh, personalized training and development because you are going to uh, collect a lot of good information in order to create the best uh, um, career path possible using training and development tools. Equal opportunity initiatives are programs designed to give equal chances to all people regardless of sex, race, and physical abilities. Leadership development programs aim to develop key leadership skills and select employees. So, leadership development obviously is applied for all the leaders of a company, but also the ones that are in a succession plan uh, to be developed uh, in order to, uh, to be in this role in the future. There are a couple of common skills that we can find in, an, in a leadership development program, and some of them are communication, negotiation, management, and motivation. In the module number two, we are going to talk about an overview of HR processes. From the structure point of view, HR uh, is composed by, in the left side, the operational activities, and in the right side we have the strategic uh, activities, right? So the operational activities are recruitment, onboarding and termination, assistant services or also called Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR. We have the benefits of a company, or sometimes we call them perks, depending on which package of benefits we have. Life quality or quality of life. Selection, HR planning, 
payroll or personal administration or people administration, training, career path and salary or compensation, change management, development, evaluation uh, or performance evaluation, mobility, talent management and union relations. In the right side, we have the strategic activities uh, from an HR. They are uh, dealing with HR softwares and technologies, trends identification through a database, continuous improvement uh, using lean office tools, different uh, generations integration, the generation X, Y, Z, negotiation, business knowledge, when you, mainly when you are a business partner, and marketing and events, business partner function or HR generalist, data mining, competence management or competences management, conflicts management, project management, compliance or ethics and compliance, engagement and motivation, and finally, financial knowledge uh, or financial management uh, knowledge, right? In the third module, we are going to discuss a little bit about strategic HR. When we are talking about strategic HR, we are dealing with different types of operations that add value to the business. Much more than only operational activities, we have the strategic ones. In this slide, you can take a look at uh, some examples of it. So, for example, I could mention for you uh, data mining as uh, an activity of uh, modern HR, where you are going to use HR softwares and technologies in order to identify trends, for example, or also to better manage your performance evaluation, compensation and benefits, your payroll, uh, identifying trends, in order to avoid risks, in order to improve the quality of life of the employees, in order to be more competitive in the market, okay? And also, if I talk about, for example, from the point of view of the business, nowadays we have a function, a, spe a specific function called business partner. A business partner is someone inside HR who has business knowledge, so this person, this professional, is going to be responsible, to be close uh, to the manager or the leader, and also to support the leader with uh, his or her decisions, uh, to better manage their teams. Also, we have the continuous improvement uh, activities, mainly related to Lean Office, which, is, um, which are terms or tools that we are going to use in order to improve our uh, operational efficiency, our processes, our policies, uh, the organization of the department, better strategies, definition, and things like that. Okay? Other types of problems, strategic uh, problems that we uh, identify inside companies is a matter of conflicts. So, conflicts management is one of the two that uh, is one of the activity that uh, uh, an HR, uh, HR uh, professional needs to have. Uh, so, for example, negotiation is another skill of this uh, employee because this employee needs to negotiate conflicts needs to negotiate with union, with employees, union representatives, and all the other types of employees. So it is a really uh, useful skill to have inside HR nowadays. And we have compliance too. So compliance is a matter of helping the leaders to be in compliance with uh, legal, uh, legal issues such as labor laws, such as laws in general, such as inside policies and procedures, and things like that. So this is, uh, these are a couple of activities that help uh, HR to be more strategic in their activities, in their actions. 
When we talk about HRP or human resources planning, we are talking about a systematic planning ahead to uh, better manage the hiring, the engagement, motivation, uh, attracting and uh, developing the best employees. With this, we intend to have the best skills inside our company, all the skills that are necessary for the strategy of the company to be aligned with it. Uh, and this uh, strategy aims uh, to achieve uh, productivity and profitability for the company, of course. And there are main, uh, four main steps in this process. They are identifying the current, the current uh, supply of employees, determining the future of the workforce, balancing between the supply and demand, and the last one, uh, how to implement these plans. So the first step, the first main step, is to identify the company's current human resources supply. In other words, I mean, uh, you have to identify to map all the skills, qualifications, positions, benefits, and performance levels of all your employees. The second step is to outline the future of its workforce. And to make it, you may consider to use uh, tools such as promotions, retirements, uh, layoffs, and transfers in order to uh, guarantee that the company is going to have the future needs. The third step is to make a cross-check between what is needed and what you have right now. To make it, we have a process called forecasting. Then, uh, uh, with it, we intend to forecast the employment demand. So, I'm going to check if the company has all the skills necessary to achieve its goals. If not, we need to develop it or we need to hire new employees to fill that gaps. Okay? And the last step, we need to, be, uh, to put in practice everything uh, aligned with the rest of the company. So, uh, to make it, we need to be aligned with all other departments, all other sectors, in order to achieve the results. And to make it, HR department needs to have a budget, and needs to, to have the ability to implement the plan, and needs a collaborative effort with the other departments to execute the plan, and then uh, we can implement it. Okay, and the goal, the main goal of HR planning is to have the, the optimal number of staff to make the most value for the company. Because the goals and strategies of the company change over the time, HRBP, uh, HRP, HR planning uh, is going to change too. Okay, so as the time flows, uh, this planning is going to change uh, to better uh, fit with the requirements of the company. In the last part of this training, we're going to discuss a little bit about the HR leadership roles inside a company. This professional has a lot of uh, different actions to take, for example, HR planning, but this professional is going to have a lot of tools to help him or her. Roger Iger, the Walt Disney CEO, said that the roles of a leader are focused in defining strategies, defining standards, motivating and lead by the example. And also inside HR, the leadership needs to be able to attract the best uh, talents, to develop them, uh, also to uh, keep them inside the companies. Also, it needs to engage and motivate these employees. So these are the roles, specific roles of an HR leader. Okay? And the, the ability to balance both uh, equality uh, equally is a skill that requires knowledge and practice, obviously, because it is not, it's not easy to engage and motivate people uh, to do uh, a good work. Okay? And also another 
important role of an HR leader, of a HR leader, is to keep all the, the other employees compliant, uh, in compliance with all the labor laws and internal rules of the company. So, as I have said before, there are many roles of an HR leader, like management, engagement, monitoring, support, um, also motivating, uh, attracting employees, uh, good employees, talented employees. And to make it happen, uh, HR leaders have a lot of different types of tools and mandatory requirements they can, uh, they have to or they can use in their strategies. Uh, and they are listed here. So these tools are change management, legal requirements, behavior aspects, cascading, HR policies, voice of the customer, knowledge sharing, standard work, roadmap, development strategies, budget planning, HR metrics, negotiation, and many other uh, others. Okay? Okay, guys, so that's all I have for you uh, regarding HR management. I hope you liked it. And if you have any questions, just let me know, send me messages, and I'll be proud to answer all of them to you. Okay, see you in our next video, guys. Bye.